the first American space mission for more than half a century, aimed at making a landing on the moon, has run into an early technical hitch. The Peregrine 1 robot lander was launched earlier today, but it's been unable to point its solar panels at the sun. The company behind the project, Astrobotic, says it's trying to fix the problem, but if it can't, the mission won't be able to proceed. Well, we can go live now to our science correspondent, Jonathan Amos, who's in the newsroom for us. Jonathan, you've covered many of these kind of things over the years. Just bring us up to date on what exactly this particular snag is. Well, we had a, a picture-perfect launch early this morning. Uh, the Peregrine craft on the top of the new Vulcan rocket left uh, Cape Canaveral in Florida. Everything seemed absolutely perfect. And then about seven hours after liftoff, we got a statement from Astrobotics, this uh, private exploration company in Pittsburgh in the United States, saying that their spacecraft had experienced an anomaly of some kind. That's what uh, uh, they use, uh, the word that they use when something is uh, not quite right. Uh, the spacecraft, they were going through the, the standard checkouts uh, that you do on a spacecraft when it comes off the top of the rocket. Uh, you go through its systems, you power everything up, you check the data to see that it's all working properly. Uh, and one of the things the spacecraft has to do, one of the first things it has to do, is to point its solar panels at the sun. That's how you maintain power. Without power, you don't have a mission. Um, you know, it's got to keep its batteries topped up. And unfortunately, the spacecraft, as Astrobotic have said, has not been able to point at the sun stably. Now, quite what that means, it's not clear from the statement. It could mean that it's doing it some of the time, but then is losing uh, track of where the sun is in the sky. So, you know, it may be topping up its batteries a bit, and then it's losing track of the sun, and then the batteries are starting to uh, discharge. So their engineers are working on it at the moment, uh, and they will have rehearsed many times scenarios just like this. They will have a fault tree that they will be going through trying to sort it out. So, you know, by no means is this mission over yet. Um, you know, they will be working their way through what they think is wrong with it. And it should be said also that spacecraft have a, a fair degree of autonomy. Um, so the spacecraft itself will recognize that it's not doing what it is supposed to do. And then it will prioritize its systems. So it will prioritize power, maintenance, obviously, and it will also prioritise communication to Earth. Um, Jonathan, um, and it doing that, and the engineers doing what they're doing, hopefully they'll be able to recover the situation. Jonathan, how typical is it for this kind of mission to get its power from solar panels, briefly? I mean, is this, is this something that's the first time? Uh, no, this is, this is standard, uh, standard operating procedure. Uh, they all go uh, with solar panels. Very, very few spacecraft uh, go with uh, nuclear batteries, you know, radioisotopes that decay, produce heat, and from that you generate electricity. But the vast majority of space missions will use solar panels. It's free energy. OK, well, it's uh, hoping that they uh, manage to get it all working, Jonathan, and hopefully you can bring us the update when it's back on track.